So how are you on today's video? I'm going to cover off Proxmox 8, the upgrade path, a little bit about the features that are now in Proxmox 8. For any of you who have already done a little bit of an update to maybe 7.4, you'll see it's now got a dark mode, which is fantastic. But Proxmox 8 is obviously another jump ahead. Now, I started with Proxmox in Proxmox 6, so I've already done the, you know, the jump from 6 to 7, which was interesting. To do Proxmox 8, uh, there are some guides and helper scripts that we'll go through in a short while. But what is Proxmox 8? So, obviously, Proxmox is a hypervisor client that allows you to, you know, build out virtualization stacks, etc. It is based on Debian 12, this one. So it's got a very new Linux kernel version of 6.2. It does incorporate some new uh, virtualization technology, mainly differences in LXC containers and ZFS does have as well a wonderful now text-based um, installer for those who don't necessarily want to use a graphical UI. I'm not obviously going to come across that because I'm not building a fresh. does have some advanced features now, particularly on the network side. So there's some additional features that they can work with with um, your VNets, et cetera, that will kind of pull in. Um, so that kind of network management has improved massively. And they've also made some changes in and around abilities with Rust scripts, for example. So if you think of the the video I done on um, building a you know a vGPU uh, gaming server, some of the functionality there will definitely have improved. But that's kind of just a, a very quick breakdown. If you want to kind of see exactly what has improved, I'll stick the link in the description. But anyway, let's get on with the upgrade. Now, I would strongly suggest that when you do this, you maybe do it with one isolated client to begin with, and then if you've got a cluster, slowly update them. The challenge is, if you start with a cluster, you must finish. Let's get into the upgrade. Now, what I will be doing, because I'm quite fortunate enough to have more than one host, uh, they are in a cluster, but this one currently has absolutely nothing on it, so I thought this was a prime candidate to do some testing. So what I'd strongly recommend any time you're going to do this is try to use their script tool that they've got available. Um, now what this does, it just runs a readiness check. So it will kind of go through there and you can see we've got one warning. Um, interesting. So it says, please check the output for any. And that's all it is. So it's a warning just to say my cluster doesn't have free quorum nodes so i'm not too worried about that various pieces and all i'm going to do is run the following command and i will stick the list of commands in the description for you but that's just going to do updates for us we're then going to do we've done the checklist we're then going to do the pve So I'm just going to run this quick command. You won't need to run it if you're on the latest version and you will get a failure if you are. So if you don't have the subscription version, you're also going to want to run the following, which is going to just comment that out. So we can do updates. And we should be able to do an apt update. and a dist upgrade. And so we've got quite a big upgrade here. So while this is running through, I will speed this up dramatically. It took around two or three minutes for mine to deploy and you will have to do some interaction in there. there's a couple of defaults that you just want to select no select some various other bits and just rattle through it to be honest most of the defaults at this precise moment will be fine if you're not quite sure what they are then check out proxmox's uh, website and forums and wiki page and they'll be able to help you
0.03. So there we are. That is how you do the upgrade. Now, there was a couple of warnings and a couple of little bits that came up in there. To be honest, at the moment, I'm not too worried about some of those. Um, we'll see how it happens and works with the other part of the uh, bit. But what I'll probably do beforehand on those ones is just run some backups. So what I'll do with those before I actually kick them off is run some very quick backups so that they're there just in case when I do the upgrade on this one we don't get too many challenges so that's what I strongly suggest I mean what you can do if you've got a cluster and it's got uh, shared storage whether you used um, SEP or you've got you know some shared storage that you've got access to what I would strongly just suggest at that point is that you just utilize um migrating of vms to get around it so i'm just literally going to go through quickly run backups of all of these and then what i will do is start the process on my main host but there we are that's how you upgrade proxmox version 7 to the very latest version so there we are we have successfully migrated two proxmox hosts to Proxmox 8. Now, obviously mine's built in a cluster, um, you know, and again, depending on your current situation and setup, these kind of things may vary. But realistically, you know, I'd always suggest starting with one with no virtual machines and containers on and then kind of spiraling out. Now, what I would do normally is obviously back up any containers prior. Um, and then obviously it's easier if you do have a problem, if you need to roll back for any reason whatsoever. Anyway, hopefully this guide was useful for you. If it was, please do the, the wonderful, what we now call the YouTube dance, because it is a like, subscribe and hit that bell. And I'll see you next time.